Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today is something entirely different. What do you do when you want a break from your usual painting routine? Well, you know, a change is as good as a holiday and I believe that cliche applies to anything you do. So today I'm going to show you my beginner's attempt at lino cutting. Well, I always encourage you to be creative and to do different things and keep yourself interested in making new art. Recently, I looked at lino cutting for the first time. Well, that's not exactly true. I did, I think, try lino cutting in a junior school. That junior school lino was terrible. It was hard as a rock and you had to try and dig into it with blunt instruments. It was a complete waste of time. Fortunately, the modern equivalent is much better. So I thought I'd take a break from painting for a bit and try out some lino. And you know, every time I've tried a different medium, it's always been an exciting thing. It makes me more interested in coming back to oil painting again, which is my main medium of choice. Now, lino is a very physical thing, um, very meditative as well. So that all appealed to me. So I thought, what about trying out some lino and showing you the results and my basic little method of uh, muddling my way through it. And I thought what I would like to do is make a lino cutting of a landscape, this little one. And uh, I thought, well, that looked quite complicated. So I've simplified things and hopefully it may inspire you to try it lino cutting out for yourself. So let's have a quick look at the method I used and the result. Well, here's an arrangement of the basic materials that I have been using, starting off with the obvious, of course, and this is this lino material. This is a soft cut lino that I obtained from Art Savings Club but you can find this anywhere at a good art store. As you can see, very flexible and easy to cut, as you'll see later on. I've got a Stanley knife for cutting lino, and I've got some ink. This is a Speedball, made by Speedball, and it is black printing ink. It is water soluble, easy to clean up. A pencil, a roller, a spoon, which uh, I'll clear up later on as I demonstrate how to use it. Some regular photocopy paper, and of course, some printing paper to print on. If you don't have fancy printing paper, of course, just print on regular paper. But uh, I've got a test pack, Fabriano Tiopolo, and they are a variety of papers in the test pack. And I like the 130 gram paper, but they've also got 290 gram, much thicker. And uh, this is an example of 290. And I'll be printing though on some of the thinner paper. But um, it really is up to you which you prefer. But I've always enjoyed Fabriano paper and it's always produced good results. Okay, so this is the painting that I want to turn into a lino cut. And because I'm a landscape artist at heart, why not? To me, the whole idea behind a lino cut is to get a graphic two-dimensional type image of course, you can suggest three dimensions, as I'm going to try to do, but I'm using two colors and I'm looking at the graphic nature of the image, the simple uh, black and white, as it were. And I'm going to make some textures using different cutting methods. Let's have a look at what I'm going to cut with. And I've purchased this little um, set of lino cutting tools. I'll put more details in the description below. 
But it doesn't really matter what brand you get as long as it does the job. I like the fact that you can unscrew the back of this and take out your different uh, cutting blades. Let's get them all out. All right, different kinds. The most common is going to be this one with the sort of broadish scoop to it. They are narrower versions which will get more detailed cutting. Flat one, I suppose you could cut like that. You can also flatten out areas. So most of them all have that rounded scoop shape. All right, so you fit the blade in like so, put the cap on and there's your cutting tool. When you want to change the blade, you just press this little metal rod at the back and it pushes off the cutting tool and you can swap it out. So that's pretty handy. Close it up. Of course, you can store the others in the back while you're working. Now, the challenge was, of course, getting an image from here onto paper and onto the lino. The thing I start off first is get the size lino that I want. All right, so put it on the paper and with a pencil just mark out the shape and then start drawing it. The simplest shapes. Just draw it out, pencil, etc, etc. And like a cooking show, I'll show you the result in a moment. So you draw that out and then I got out my marker pens and marked out where I'm going to leave the printing surface, what I want black, and of course what I want white, or what I leave white, is going to be cut away. And where I want texture, I'm going to use the gray marker and I'm just going to mark off texture. All right, or gray, I'm going to use different textures for that. And uh, for instance, shadows as well. Of course, you're going to have shadows across the road and the shadows will be dark on your drawing because black indicates where ink is going to go and of course the light part of the shadow over there is going to be cut away. All right, so you can mark with a W or white or you whatever code you want to use or C for cut. And what I ended up with is this. Right, this is the positive image. You can transfer this onto your lino. I'll show you that in a moment. And cut it all out. And of course when you print, you are going to get a reverse. Now that might not bother anyone who's looking at it for the first time, but it bothers me. I want the orientation in a certain way. What I thought was the easiest for me was simply to take a photo, put it in my um, imaging software, doesn't matter whatever you, kind you use, and simply flip it in digitally and then send it to the printer. All right, so if you don't have a printer, you can obviously do it by hand. It's more time consuming. I put the photo in my imaging software, flipped it, printed it out, and obtained this. This is printed out of a printer. And um, you can see the gray marker has come out slightly green because I left it in color mode, but that doesn't matter. The point is you've got a reverse image. Now you want to get that onto your lino. All right, and you can use carbon paper. You can also 
just put it like so and draw it out yourself. You can use anything you want as long as it's not going to influence your printing and draw it out just eyeballing it or you can use carbon paper so you can put on your carbon paper your image make sure you've got the carbon paper the right way shiny side down get a heavy duty pencil and start getting the main shapes even if you can only get the big shapes then you can go back in and fix things up. I suppose that's not very clear on camera but you can see some image there. Alright so once you've got that down if it's not 100% clear on the carbon or you need more you can just fill it in by hand and see where you need to work it out. Ah, so when you've got that down then it's time to start cutting. Now I like to create a, a border and so it prints out with, with a border. Using a straight edge or your ruler just put in a line for a border and the thing with Lino is you're going to get surprise results. Right? Um, textures could be a bit grungy, who knows, but it's going to be interesting and that's one of the appeals of Lino of course. So I've got in a sort of a mid scoop shape cutting here and not putting your fingers there of course. You may even want to wear a glove on your left hand if you're right handed with your cutting. But uh, keep things firmly in place and you can see it's quite easy to cut. Alright and then the light colour will indicate what's going to be white. I prefer to turn it around and always cut away and so I'll go right the way around and get this edge and don't rush it take your time this is no pressure this is for fun and us to do something different and interesting. Just try and get these bits off neatly so you don't leave any little hanging bits that might show up in printing. Okay, last one. Alright, and then you can start in the main image. And uh, for instance, the sky over there is all going to be uh, light. There's now, what I do is to try and create these little dots and dashes, etc. Um, little accents. You can do the same by just making sure you leave a few little spots, different, different sizes perhaps, and make sure you leave those in. So when you're cutting out the sky, here I'm going along the length of the ridge of the mountain, and Then I'm going to have to make sure that I leave some of those dark shapes. Little accents suggesting leaves from the tree and so on. Right. There will be one there. Try and vary the sizes. Medium, large, small. You don't need too many. Just 
suggestion suggestion of something. All right, and then I cut out the rest of the sky. So just even pressure. Don't stab at it or jab. Just slow, even pressure. Just go with, kind of go with the direction of the object or subject you're working on. So with, with the sky, more or less a horizontal movement up there. Until you've removed what you need to. Now some of these ridges might still pick up ink and show off something. You've got to decide if you want it absolutely flat, in which case you may want to change to this tool and just flatten all of these little ridges. But I'm going to leave a few that will show up little marks on the print. All right, and that's simply for interest's uh, sake, just a bit of texture. All right, so when you have worked through your lino, you should end up with something that looks like this. All right, I've got the trees, there's shadows, lampposts, there's the figure, very basic. I've used the fine cutting tool to create these little stipple marks for the mountain in the back, some distinguishing marks to show off different bushes as well, getting the highlights around the trees and so on. I never said I was an expert at this. This is really a, a beginner's attempt at it, but there we go. And now I'm ready to start printing. This is the paper I'm going to use, the thinner 130 gram paper. And now I just want to get the position and uh, placement of where I want the image to go. So I'm using the square ruler and a piece of photocopy paper and just going to mark off where my printing paper is going to go. And then we place the lino down and leaving a bigger gap underneath the bottom section of the the print. I'm getting some uh, glass, just a piece of ordinary glass and then the speedball black ink, the water-based ink. I've got my brayer roller and I'm just going to get a nice flat um, a bit of ink spread over the roller. Try and keep the width of the ink that's more or less the same as the roller so you don't waste too much ink. Get it going nicely covered, nice and evenly covered, and then start applying the ink to the lino. Now remember the first print will not be perfectly inked. The second print will be a lot darker as more ink gets evenly distributed. But uh, we have to make a start. Just getting a bit of ink out of there. I want that white line to come through. So you got to just put down the, the ink and try and get it uh, evenly spread. And then start printing. That's the only way to do it. Make sure your lino is still centered and then get the paper and carefully place the paper on top of the lino block. Don't move it obviously, just put it down once and then using the back of the spoon 
uh, you know what I've got the spoon for, and that's just to rub the paper over evenly, trying to get the a, a proper inking. And uh, you can do this for a while just to make sure it's all done. And then you can take a peek, just secure the paper at the bottom, lift over and have a look. And I can see I need some more ink. So this might not be the wisest thing to do, but carefully get some ink on that side of the block. And then rub again. And you get, should get a pretty good print. And uh, not too bad. There's a bit ink missing over there. So I'm going to have a second go. Put some more ink down. This should come out a lot darker. Follow the process again. And there I've got a much, I think, a better print. Well, I hope this has inspired you to try out lino cutting for yourself. Why not? Have it uh, just make a simple design and get something down on paper and you may surprise yourself. Well, if you haven't subscribed yet and you found this useful or entertaining, do that now. And don't forget, I've got a free course up here. Check it out and uh, you can try out something over the weekend as well. Well, until next time, have a creative week ahead and cheers for now. Mm -hmm.